Hello, Polycount, and anyone else who wants uh, to make these cool GIFs for their uh, workshop pages. I'm going to tell you how to do just that. So, you're going to need Marmoset Toolbag, Photoshop, and Virtual Dub. Virtual Dub is a video processing software, handles AVIs and GIFs very well. Uh, Photoshop is just Photoshop, you should, so you should just have that. And Marmoset Toolbag, which is our fantastic third-party rendering engine, does everything in real time, can do thing, crazy cool things like uh, the real-time ambient occlusion, uh, the real-time local reflections. That's nice. I've always, I always like to see local reflections uh, being something that, that we can handle in real time. So DirectX 12, get on that. I don't, I don't care about the polygon renderings. I want to see, I want to see more reflections because those look awesome. Right. So. In Marmoset, uh, good rendering settings to have, uh, resolution 1 to 1, AA at 4 is fine. Make sure it's nice and sharp at that small resolution. We don't need stereo 3D, why is that even there? Uh, scene, make sure you don't really need a wireframe. Your sky background, make sure it's off. Background color, to get the same color to match the, uh, the Steam website background. 38, 38, and 39 in your RGB values. Uh, really uh, works quite well. So 38 in red, 38 in green, 39 in blue. Um, ambient refractive, refractive index, I don't know what that does. I don't touch it, everything looks fine. Um, lighting, local reflections on, definitely. Ambient occlusion on, just looks good in general. And high res shadows if you're using any lamps to cast shadows. I'm not really casting any shadows. Um, but this looks fine. A good sky to use that I've found is definitely indoor fluorescence and the presets. Um, it's just nice, non-colorized lighting, plenty of uh, plenty of little reflective lights uh, that will show off your metallic surfaces. Um, but yeah, that's all. That, that's all good. Everything's good to go. Um, as you can see, this is the little Clockmaster set that I made for Clockwork. His uh, his power cog isn't in this scene because I felt I just thought I'd leave it out. Um, but yeah, here's your little scene. You got it all done. Great. Now settings. If you for your capture settings, you want to hit capture up here. Click settings. Set your width to 750 and your height to 422. Um, th those are the, the dimensions that will help uh, your GIF properly fit in the description of your workshop page. Um, your sampling, uh, 16 is the default, it's fine. Format, save these as PNGs. We're not going to be using targets since we don't need the transparency. Uh, the reason we don't use transparency is because there's a bug with Marmoset where, uh, local reflections will actually cause artifacts in your, uh, transparency. Um, I really wish it didn't do that because I love saving, I love rendering with local reflections, but until they fix that, no transparency. Your frame rate set to 24, this is important later, and your duration, 5 seconds is quite good. Uh, clockwise or counterclockwise? I'm going to go clockwise because this is clockwork, not counterclockwork. Hardy har har. Anyway, so, um, you're going to click capture and you're going to click turntable, but I have already rendered off our turntable. This is going to save to your desktop unless you've like set any other places otherwise. So, 119 frames, pretty good. Now we're going to go to Virtual Dub. Virtual Dub, like I've already explained, is a video processing uh, software. It's free, it's open source. You can download it from their website, virtualdub.com. I'm pretty sure that's what it is, but just Google Virtual Dub and you'll find it. Terrible piece of software to use. At, I don't like it, I hate it. But it is very good for, uh, for what we're about to use it for. So if you, you click File, Virtual Dub, click Open Video File, and Click on the first frame of your turntable and make sure you have automatically load linked segments ticked. This will make sure it is loaded in an image sequence. So turntable 0, turntable 1, 2, 3, and so on will all be in the right order. Right. So click open. Here it is. You've got your input and output. Um, output and input look the same right now, but if you click play input, you see like these little shadows and artifacts. Like It looks like a compressed GIF, but if you stop 
move, you move this all the way back. Um, like you can scr scrub through the frames with this little bar, but it doesn't automatically go back every time you want to replay it. So just drag it back, click Play Output. Now you can see what the actual output will look like. It's nice and high quality, it's really good. Stop. Let's move this all the way back. Now, for, for some reason, I don't know why, but for some reason, Virtual Dub, if you go to Video and Frame Rate, by default plays at 10 frames per second. Unforgivable. Why would we ever want that? Change your frame rate to 24 like we output in the settings. Like, if you go back to Marmoset, click your settings. Frame rate 24. That's why we needed that. So, go back to Virtual Dub, change frame rate to 24 frames per second, click OK. Play your output. That looks fantastic. That's great. That's what we want. So, we're going to hit stop, drag this all the way back, click file, and what we're going to do is go to export animated GIF. Make sure infinite loop is uh, ticked, and I'm just going to save this straight to the desktop as turntable 000.gif. OK. And that's just going to quickly process that. Now the reason we need, or at least the reason I need a, uh, an AVI file for this is Photoshop is really weird with um, image sequences. Can't just, it, like mine doesn't natively open them. So I'm going to click New. Um, I've already got width and height set to 750 and 422. And that's going to be fine. But what I'm going to do is click Import video frames to the layers. In fact, I don't even know if I needed to make that new one, but basically that's going to give me a... Uh, that's going to let me import the video that we just saved off, turntable 000.avi. Hit load, and from beginning to end, uh, you don't need the limit frames. And make a frame animation. You can like scrub through the frames if you want to. That's what we got. It's going to look great. Click OK. It's just going to... Yeah, that made a new one, so you didn't really need to click new anyway. You just need to open it. But you can see all these layers in your layer tab. Crazy. We don't need those. So we're going to go to um, Window. And if you're using CS6, uh, it's going to say Timeline. So you're going to want to look for Timeline under T. But because I'm using CS5, it's just still called Animation. And uh, set your Animation Mode to Frames. And if you hit play, you can definitely see that everything's working as we want it to. So this is working really nice. Loops perfectly. That's great. Right, so now we're going to click Save for Web and Devices. This is going to let us save it as an animated GIF. However, we all understand GIFs. We all know how they can be horribly compressed enormous file sizes, they're terrible. Like, that's why everyone's moving to WebM, but still. We're using GIFs because that's what we're using now. Now the background is nice and solid. We're not getting that noisy dithering that we normally get, but um, I find 128 sort of helps. It uh, doesn't really... Yeah, 128 doesn't like ruin the quality that much. If you, if, but if you're still iffy about quality, keep it at 256. Uh, dither at 100% is pretty good, um, but this is going to be like a five megabyte, a five megabyte GIF you're putting out. So you probably want to, you're probably going to want to upload it somewhere to like a Dropbox or um, or something. Imgur definitely won't take these. So if you're using Imgur or Imager, um, this is going to be way too big. They won't take it. Uh, Dropbox is good, however, uh, one thing that I experienced with the Clockmaster set is, because of its, uh, its popularity, Dropbox actually cut the, the, um, actually cut the link because it was receiving too many, uh, users viewing it. So, um, wherever you're hosting your GIF, you're going to want to host it somewhere reliable, um, or, or something that can take a lot of traffic if you've got a very popular set. Uh, something that will upload a 5 megabyte GIF, because a lot of places will not take a 5 megabyte GIF just for the sheer fact that it's 5 megabytes. Anyway, um, this is good. It's all great. You can preview it. Like, if I click preview, this will open it up in Chrome, my uh, default browser of choice. And that's what it's going to look like. And it looks fantastic for what I need to use it for. Hopefully it looks fantastic for you. Um looks pretty much the same uh, as this one.
So I'm just going to close that preview and go back to Photoshop. We're going to hit save, and I'm going to save this in my little promo folder. Uh, I've already got the turntable that I rendered off before here, but I'm just going to call it Turntable 2. And save off that GIF. And there, that's all there is to it. So I really hope that this has helped. We'll probably see some really nice looking GIFs in the workshop. It's really good for presentation. Um, but yeah, um, hope that this helped. And get out there and make some awesome polycount sets. Or Dota 2 sets, TF2 sets, whatever you're making sets for. Items, mounts, couriers, announcers. Now you don't need this for announcers, but hey. Uh, anything helps.